Uh, all right, gotta get some more work done. Alexa, turn off the sun. Hey guys, today I wanna to talk a little more about my filmmaking process, show this giant light that Aperture sent me, and then also talk about what you can do with cheaper gear and small lights and film with your iPhone. Aperture sent me this light for free to try out and I used it in that first shot to make my living room look like it was day when it was night. It is quite a bright light. Previously I thought I might need the light that is twice as powerful as this to get the settings that I've been trying to do because it's so specific. I have to try to make the aperture as small as possible to get the most in focus and I also shoot in slow-mo because of the fog effects and things. So I need a whole lot of light. And lights like this, I don't know if you can see it, the 200D and the 300D, even with the little uh, Fresnel lens, was not enough to really get me as far as I wanted to. So I'm playing with this. This light is crazy bright, and it's hard to even look at in person when I have it on this lens. But as I kind of like turn it on, this is a diorama that has a little bit of a bigger window and so I'm getting more light from it in, so it's giving us the best chance. Um, but I want to see kind of what this is like and try to set up even a kind of a background photo outside the window and really make this thing look like it is outdoors and realistic. So let's, uh, let's kind of put this together. I'm also going to throw a light onto that backdrop. It's only going to help really illuminate this so it doesn't look like it's too dark outside. And yeah, I think that's gonna look pretty good. I have the inspector here inspecting my work if you can't uh, hear him already. All right, so I'm gonna set up the camera and see what this kind of looks like in terms of settings and get a, a little bit of a before and after what my settings might have been like before and what they are now. So this is what it looks like right now with that little bit of a background outside the window. I tweaked the location of it a little bit, tested to see what it looks like with and without the light and it definitely needed to be lit even though in the other shot it looked like the, all of this was just completely blasted by the main light. And I worked on basically the balance between these two lights, what looked the most natural to me. All right, so I've started a move, I've programmed a move with my slider and I've gotten my camera settings. And right now the Fresnel lens is on full spot. So it's a 15 degree spot through that window. And it seems to be more than double the power of what I had before with just the reflector. I'm actually at the settings that I wanna be at. And I even had to turn the light down a little bit. So right now I'm filming at 1 250th of a second shutter speed an aperture of f40 and an ISO of 12,800. That's kind of the second native ISO on my camera, the Sony a7S Mark III. That, that's a, a, another story for another day. It gets really technical, but right now I'm seeming to get the settings that I want. So I'm gonna try a couple shots with this one and then maybe another diorama later with a smaller window and see if there's any more challenges. I mean, from what I can tell, this looks really good. Um, so much more is in focus in the miniature now, which is what I've been trying to do. And the only real way I can do that is by stopping down the aperture as small as possible. On this lens, it's f40. To give you a quick idea, this is what it looks like at f14, just looking at this ruler. And then at f40, you can see how much more is in focus between those two points. And again, closer up, this is F14 in a spot that was not focused, and then in F40, it comes into focus. All right, so now this is a different diorama. It's one of my older ones. It was actually the piece that I made on the collaboration video I did with Bentley House Minis. I'm gonna give it a shot and really see kind of what it looks like. So you can see in this shot, even part of the couch, as well as the windows in the back, are relatively in focus. This makes your brain think it's more realistic. Whereas when there's a shallow depth of focus, your brain automatically thinks it must be fake. 
All right, so I realized that not everyone has access to these big lights or even the crazy camera setup that I have. And so while I'm going to show you something with this slider, you can get a much cheaper slider or even try doing it handheld if you want. But I'm gonna demonstrate how to just film something with a simple app on an iPhone and get a pretty good result. If you're just getting into this and starting to film some things or, or even wanna play around with it, you can use a phone because they're doing really well with video these days and a couple of these simple tricks. So I programmed to move on my slider, but I'm using an app called Filmic Pro. It allows you to lock things like focus and exposure and white balance, all of the major settings on a normal camera. You can lock that and get a little bit better quality of video out of your iPhone as well in the, in the settings. So that's my first big tip is get an app like Filmic Pro and I'll show you a little bit of what that looks like. All right, so this is Filmic Pro. I have it set to 1080p right now, but I wanna change the frame rate to 120 frames a second so that I can capture this in slow-mo and it'd be really nice and smooth. So I switch that over. And then if you click on the bottom left corner, there's an icon to mess with the camera exposure settings. If you click on the ISO number over there, which is right now is 38, it'll lock that. And then you can use the slider to dial in the exposure with your shutter speed. So you're not gonna have any crazy weird ISO levels at any point giving you a lot of noise. You can also use the slider on the right to focus manually or zoom, or you can have it in autofocus. And then you can also do custom white balance in the bottom left. So I dialed in a quick custom white balance. I didn't realize it had such a magenta tint on it. I should have taken that down a little bit, but otherwise dial that in so it's not gonna be changing all of the time. And there's a lot of other things this app can do, but this is about what we need for now. All right, so now we have the app kind of figured out. I have the big light as my light source, but I've dimmed it down to 5%. So you can use a number of pretty cheap lights that are good for video. Um, as long as they have decent color and you can control them, you can get a good result. Um, you can even just start with any old light you have in your house just to play around. But anyway, it's coming through the window just like before. I have a slider programmed shot just like before, and I'm gonna try and roll this with my haze. I get this atmosphere aerosol stuff. It's a little expensive, um, but it works really well for things like this. You can also just use a Halloween hazer if you wanna use haze, but if you don't, you, can, you don't have to use haze either, you can just get started. So I'm gonna hit record on my phone, put some little haze in there, start the move. And this is what I got just with my first try. So not bad for an iPhone. I really just set some settings really quick and forgot it. I wasn't going too hard and I think I'm going to even try to show you Quickly now, I'm only in um, 60 frames, I believe, right now. You can go to 120 frames and make it even slower. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just test what a handheld shot might look like and show you what you could do there without buying all the fancy slider and stuff. Trying to stabilize myself fairly well and making sure I'm locking focus on the area that I'm in. And then trying to just move in and out very smoothly. I didn't even add haze to the shot and I think it came out pretty good. All right, so we played around with that. I think it's a really great way to get started. And if you have one of the newer iPhones, the 13, it has a cinematic mode in, in the app as well, which really stabilizes. I don't think I was doing much of the actual stabilization. And so you could see a little bit of the shake, but some of these new phones have really great stabilization where you can do a lot especially once you get practiced with your hands, even in small miniatures like this and get away with really nice smooth shots as long as you're in slow-mo. Um, and so I would just encourage you to try different things out. It really is all about the lighting and the atmosphere that you create with your miniature and kind of how you place things with the light. So while these big expensive toys for filmmaking are really great for certain purposes and obviously what I'm doing is a very unique purpose. You can get started with things that are much cheaper and I really recommend you do that. I didn't start with all of this stuff. I've been doing filmmaking for over 10 years but I don't want you to feel 
like you can't get into this because you still don't have the money or, or space for some of these things, get started with the more basic stuff and get excited about it. So as always, I want to thank my patrons for supporting me and for Aperture for sending me this amazing light and just being a support to this channel. They never require me to even review this thing or say anything good about it at all. They just sent it to me because they knew I could use it and told me to say whatever I think about it. And I do love their lights. I use them on every shoot at this point because they're so easy to use and work great. So again, thank you, Aperture. You're gonna to wanna to stay tuned to my channel in the next couple months. I have some huge projects going on that I cannot wait. I'm so excited to share with you. So if you like my videos at all, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and stay tuned to see some of that. Also, let me know if you enjoy this filmmaking focused instructional type stuff. I've been thinking about doing a really comprehensive, in-depth online course just about how to film light and photograph miniatures. And if there's enough interest in that, I will try to pursue that. So let me know down in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. Otherwise, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.